I think it's given us more freedom than we were giving ourselves before in that we can Im- tactfully, you know, put these pieces and influences that, you know, you might not hear in standard folk rock and things that you would think about in that regard. So it, it really kind of places us in a, in, a, in a different blend of genres than I think you hear most of the time because we are, we're willing to incorporate, like, things that you would really think about in like a metal song or things like that. On this episode of In Session at Jackrabbit Soundcheck, we sit down with the cover letter to dissect their song, The Wake, where the band is moving with their music, and why they felt that the name, The Cover Letter, was appropriate for their band. I'm David Biggs. And I'm Vance Van Donselaar. We are The Cover Letter, and we are In Session at Jackrabbit Soundcheck. This song is called Some Things by The Cover Letter. Cover Letter is a band that we've been trying to get onto our show for some time. We had been talking with their drummer, Patrick Barrow, who you might remember from our very first episode with Chill Russell about coming in for months. Their folky instrumentation coupled with their male-female vocal dynamic brought to mind other bands such as Mumford & Sons and Of Monsters & Men. We were finally able to work around their busy playing and writing schedule to sit down and ask, who is the cover letter? You know, there's been a lot of evolving of, of our group over the last year. Um, we had, you know, we got some new members and we, we had some members leave. And so we've really been focusing over this last year, creating a collective sound between all of us and really getting to showcase and spotlight our new people and, and bring them in to this new sound that we have. So, I mean, the cover letter is literally, I think, all, all six of us. And it's a big deal for us to really put that together and, and show that because our sound did change and we really embraced it and ran with it. And so we really tried to make sure that everybody has a collective kind of approach to everything. So, yeah, it's always been kind of a, a living, growing thing, even when, you know, cause it was originally just the two of us just kind of messing around. And then, you know, we had a, a group of people um, and they kind of, we, you know, people left, people came in and obviously we have the group we have now, which is, we're super excited about it. Uh, but we've never been, you know, ones to, to stifle the sound. You know, it's just you come in, you contribute what, what, what 
whatever you feel like, you know, your sound is. And then the, the whole group changes. And you know, right now I'd say, you know, we're on the heavier side of where we were originally. And we originally started as a, as really just acoustic folk duo where we were just pushing ourselves with how many instruments can one person play at one time. And so complicated stuff and we like rock music and we like different stuff. And, and so it never was going to just, it's never going to end there. Um, and so throughout time, we've just kind of incorporated the little individual rock things that we like, and it's, it's kind of grown. And I don't think we really go into it with a certain style in mind, but it's, it's a folk rock, rocky folk thing. I don't know. We, uh, we were originally very resistant to the idea of having a drummer. Yeah. Uh, originally, we were just we were wanting to just have like a stomp kick and tambourine kind of thing. And then, you know, we had a guy who ended up playing drums and he played like guitar and drums. And that was how we got the drum thing set up. And, and we just decided that things are better when there's a banging drum in the back. Whenever we were asked what we sound like, we just look at Evan. Evan. Well, yeah. my most recent soundbite was like if Neil Young was born 30 years later and played in Modest Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I really do like Before that, I was saying, what, like, uh, Fleetwood Mac meets Taking Back Sunday? <laughs> and, and they all play in Modest Mouse today. Yeah. 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 We had played in some some rock bands, and so for us, we lived together, Jared and I, um, and just kind of started happening, and it was acoustic, and um, I played drums originally, so I was kind of working on guitar stuff, and it just became very rhythmic, rhythm guitar, and I still do that today. Uh, <laughs> And, and through that, it just evolved, because naturally we don't, we don't gravitate that way. And so we kind of started with that general idea, and just throughout time, like our natural influence just kept coming in, and, and we liked more rock music. And so it was actually really fun to take something that you want to turn really rock and try to turn it more folk and like try to put different elements in there. And so as songwriters, I think that was, was very uh, expanding for us as far as like how we write things, how we approach songwriting. Um, and then from there, you know, we've met these wonderful musicians and they come in and, and kind of people come in with bare bones ideas or like a riff or sometimes, you know, Evan will come in with, I have everything and parts for everyone and this is what you'll do. And, <laughs> you're, and you're like, great. Up, you're going to like it. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, sometimes that's great. And it's, it's actually very nice to have people in your band who can come to you with a complete idea. Um, and then you still get to put your little pieces and things in there. But, you know. You write songs and they're not always finished, they're not always in order, and so you end up writing like pieces and bits of everything and someone comes with a full song and it's just nice and it kind of can reinvigorate everything. And It's nice that everyone's very yeah. open to feedback and, and yeah. I don't want to say criticism, but you know, just being able to critique. Constru 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 constructive criticism, yeah, critiquing and you know, someone can come in and say, hey, this is what I have written. and you know, I am not entertained. Usually, <laughs> yeah, I've, you know, I've worked with people in the past that are like, no, I'm going to write my thing. I'm not going to play what you want to play yeah. in previous projects. And yeah. so it's nice that everyone's very open-minded about it. And yeah. How did the uh, decision come about to eventually incorporate a drummer into what you were doing since you were so opposed to it? <laughs> <laughs> so I played drums, and so we would start throwing little things in there because naturally I gravitate to that being the first instrument. Yeah. Um, and, and everything sounds good with the little drums, you know. It's a little bit here and there, and then, you know, next thing you know, you're just playing drums all night. <laughs> Is give a mouse a cookie with, with a previous member, Trevor. Yeah. He, uh, he worked at Chewy's with, with, with one of Shout our previous Chewy's. band members. Everybody. Chewy's, everyone, we're all incorporated in some way through Chewy's. I don't know if you know that, but <laughs> everyone's got a, a degree of separation from Chewy's. But, you know, we, we were kind of, a, I think we were a four piece at the time, right? It was a, mm -hmm. it was there were four of us and we were kind of happy with the broken down thing and he was just like, hey, I play guitar and I sing and I play drums if you want to that. And so we let him come over a couple times and play and then we were like, all right, well, very broken down drums and then bro very broken down became more technical, more difficult and then, you know, all of a sudden there's a drummer and then he started playing drums. He'd jump behind the drum set and play sometimes and... And then, yeah, then, you know, and now, you know, we've just kind of given into the rockier feel. And, and so we're full blown drummer time now. So <laughs> this is Ghost by the cover letter. What? Dude, come on. You can't do that. All right. Start over. Just keep cutting. Refrain from laughing. Great, guys.
Choosing a band name is an important part of creating your band identity. Before they see any cover artwork or hear any music, it's what first gives your audience an impression of what you're going to bring to the table. Some bands choose names that are so out of this world that the subject of how they came up with it is best left alone. Some bands, however, such as The Cover Letter and Tennessee Stiffs, who you will hear from in a later episode, have names that relate or stand out in their own way. We felt that there was a story behind this one, so we asked, why name your band The Cover Letter? We get this question often, and it was... we have had wonderful answers in the past. <laughs> I mean, really, it was we, we were really struggling with, with jobs. We had crappy jobs back then. There, we have better jobs now. We worked together at a, a very awful place. Yeah, let's just leave it at um, that. And <laughs> there was bad jobs, very bad jobs, and then unemployment again. And I don't know, the cover letter to me it was just kind of just, it's an obnoxious document that's not needed and necessary. And, you know, it's kind of a play on, you know, what, what we want to do is we want to play music, you know, and that was what we wanted to be our careers. And I don't know. It just kind of that's it's how kind of relevant to us to the time period that that the whole thing came together, and yeah. it was really just about you know who we are and what we want to do. And we took some time away from music to pursue professional goals and things like that. And then at the end, you know, we just decided that that wasn't really what we wanted to do. We always have wanted to play music, and so it was kind of more of a reset of you know where our, our priorities and focus are in our lives. And and from that, you know, we've just grown into this now. So. Uh, it still means it still means uh, a pretty good amount to me in that regard. So, I like it. Whatever. Yeah. I like it. And Google said it wasn't a band's name. He hates that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real answer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you said once that the cover letter is something that you just had to do for all the jobs you applied for, and music is something that you just have to do. So that yeah. was the connection. Yeah, that's one a, time that was a good answer. answer. You should write that down. That would have yeah, been better. Yeah. That stuck yeah. with me. You said yeah. that one time. So I'm going to Yeah, uh, erase what I said and go with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, did the, uh, how did the formation of the band come come together when you guys started it and going through that time period? How, how, what was the, What's the story behind that? So uh, originally, Jared and uh, myself were roommates in college and we lived together after college for a while. Mm -hmm. And so we had a, collected a lot of instruments just throughout our, our musical careers, and we had everything we needed for most people. And, and we met um, originally Chelsea uh, at a house party of one of our friends, and, and she came over and jammed, and we liked it. And our friend uh, Johnny came over, and, and he's a great musician, good songwriter, and so that kind of stuck. And then, like we said, Trevor, we met uh, actually Jeez. through work, yeah, yeah, at the time, and, and he came over. And then throughout time, it's kind of uh, formatted and changed into a... A little bit different group, but yeah, this current one we've it really was just kind of most y'all for my Craigslist, baby. Yeah, yeah, this one was Craigslist, <laughs> friendship yeah, to Craigslist, Craigslist cover is letter great to 2018. <laughs> yeah, so about what was it, a year and a half ago, I guess, yeah. last yeah. February. Yeah, yeah, that uh, um, you know, the other people just kind of had other stuff going on. Chelsea got back with her punk band, uh, Johnny moved to Colorado with his girlfriend, and uh. Trevor got with a metal band, of course. Yeah, Rickshaw Billy's, Rick, Billy's Burger Patrol. Rickshaw Billy's Burger Patrol. He was always a metal guy, so that was what, was what he was meant to be doing. And then, um, you know, we were kind of at the crossroads of, do we want to keep doing this project? Do we want to, you know, do we just want to separate and do other things? And, you know, uh, Angie, she'd been coming to our shows since the beginning, really, and, and she knew all the songs. She's got a great voice, so that was a pretty easy one right there. And Craigslist! Just to see yeah. who was out there, and we found these two people that weren't serial killers, and I had uh, creepy, the creepy, creepy crisis meetings. Right Fletcher here, and so. Evan, um, and uh, then Patrick. Technically, I was first, by the way. Yeah, that's true. You were. Oh. I beat Angie by about a week. Yeah, that's true. And we played with us, and, and Trevor was still with the band for a few months, and then uh, he ended up leaving. And we knew uh, Patrick was a chill Russell. He, we played with him uh, at, in San Marcos a couple times. Remember? Um, I think so. Yeah, yeah. We played Mister Fest. Yeah. Mister Fest. Together. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. Um, and, you know, we just kind of like, hey, is any drummers? And he was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'd like to come play. And, and yeah, did a lot of luck. Fit back yeah. yeah, pretty lucky, actually. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Lucky and ch people checking Craigslist ads at the right time. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty odd when you find a group of people that you respect musically and you just enjoy hanging out with them and doing stuff with. So that works out really Yeah, I wonder what that's like. Yeah, it must be nice. <laughs> 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 oh, <dudes. laughs> In spite uh, words. Thank you for listening to In Session at Jackrabbit Sound Shack. We wanted to remind you that if you like what you hear, please subscribe to our show. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to tap the notification bell so you never miss an artist. Okay. Now on with the show. This is I'll Be the Sun by the cover letter. Where have you been? I can see the sun.
sunlight it's creeping in And I don't know why the day seems so much longer Than they did back then In getting to know the cover letter, we notice that they are a band that seems to want to take their music and writing through every avenue possible, so long as it creates the best possible song they can produce. They've changed a few band members along the way, as a lot of young bands do, but more importantly, they've gone through instrumentation changes. Going from a band who'd switch through instruments on stage to writing folk arrangements through the mind of a metal guitarist. This sort of band evolution is really interesting to us as it allows us to follow a journey with the band as opposed to watching from the outside. So we wanted to know, what direction do you see the band moving in? When I first joined the band, you know, we were still doing some, some of that like switching stuff, switching instruments and, and some more, um, you know, minimal arrangements and stuff. And um, that was one of the first things that I set out to kill was like, everybody, <laughs> <It's true. laughs> what, what instrument are you best at? Okay, that's what you play all the time now. <laughs> like, you're gonna this just stay in one place, sense. you're gonna check one microphone, you're gonna hear one monitor mix for the whole show. Okay. And that's what helped a lot. it's a trade-off, of course, because there is a performative element to the like wacky switching and everybody running around on stage. And you don't get that if everybody just stays in one place and, you know, does that. But 
I think that the benefits are still worth it with people focusing more on what they do best and with uh, consistency and how we can arrange things and obviously the, you know, simpler kind of um, setups that we can get to with that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I wanted the band to focus more on um, really high quality performances and like still playing with a lot of energy, even if you just have to stay in one place the whole time. I'm and um, <laughs> you breathe. bringing that into the music with, you know, kind of trying to be maybe a little more um, intentional about things, a little more refined with the songwriting, um, while not losing the, the kind of good blend of influences that I felt like you had already established mm. with doing some folksy stuff, doing some more rock stuff, being able to play out a little bit, jam a little bit, but always stay focused on the song, on the emotion, on vocal performance. I think it's given us more freedom than we were giving ourselves before in that we can tactfully, you know, put these pieces and influences that, you know, you might not hear in standard folk rock and things that you would think about in that regard. So it, it really kind of places us in a, in, a, in a different blend of genres than I think you hear most of the time because we are... We're willing to incorporate like things that you would really think about in like a metal song or things like that, which we don't do things super crazy, but that's part of the fun of it is taking that idea and refining it down into something that will, will fit the style of the song. But in doing so, it's, it's really kind of opened the doors for us as far as what we'll play, and we don't really restrict ourselves in that regard. So. Yeah. We'll, we'll bring different different influences in, and it's just really amazing. Sometimes to a fault. Yeah, sometimes like, to a fault. But. You seriously cannot put this, like, funk riff in this folk song. <laughs> yeah. you got to stop. <laughs> but we'll try it. Yeah. We'll, <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll have times where we'll work on a song for months and then be like, now nah, we'll scrap it for parts, basically, like taking apart a car and putting it together in a different vehicle. So, I mean, we have uh, one of the songs... One of our newer songs that we're really crazy about is the blend of, what, three different songs that we've chopped up? The Wake. The yeah. Wake, yeah. yeah. But I do tend to write stuff differently for this band than I do for, like, my own music or other projects yeah. or whatever. I think that yeah. the, the brand of the cover letter is a bit more direct, a bit more story-focused. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I try not to be too abstract or too, like, figurative with anything that I bring to the group just because I don't want to lead us astray. Um, I think that good like clear, strong messages are still the lyrical brand of this band. Yeah. Um, although I do think the the new songs and the the new you know material that I've brought to the table can expand that a little bit. You can expand the target a little bit. Yeah. Um, without losing yourselves, but we're not out here trying to do like you know completely nonsense Abstract like Bon Iver type lyrics where it's just <laughs> like. That's one of the things that I'm always harping on in other music that we that we listen to together or whatever. Because we'll, we'll listen to stuff in the car or we're just sitting around and like talk about, is this cool? Does this work? Why does this work or not? And complete nonsense lyrics are one of my immediate triggers for like, this is junk. <laughs> <laughs> this song is called The Wake by the cover letter.
that I was born, I was already dying to be lying next to you. One of the best parts of these shows is really getting to know our guests as people rather than just as music. But one of the most intimate ways we get to know them is through the music. We love discussing songs in depth with the bands, and while setting up for today's session, the band was discussing which songs they wanted to put in the playlist. Almost immediately, their song, The Wake, was unanimously agreed upon, which definitely caught our attention. We asked the cover letter to get more in depth with us. So this was originally, and this is one of those songs where we have written it fully and played it a few times and then cut it all the way back down to parts and re-pieced it back together and took things from other songs. Um, because not that we want to override everything, but we just want to be, we want to be satisfied with our work. And, and you can write a song and finish it, but you know, we were never just collectively like this song is done. And so we, we came back and it was originally kind of written in a, in a tone of from a musician leaving someone behind to go on the road and, and kind of the love lost there and thinking back to it. And then it over time has had some slightly darker elements <laughs> alluded to in the song and, and it kind of took shape into some different stuff, which is fun for us to be able to have Am ambiguously toned lyrics enough that we can put several meanings to it, and it's it's fun for us. And we may get into the exact things about that at some point, but it's fun to leave it alone for now. <laughs> it's pretty obvious. I think love loss, yeah, is the love loss is the probably good one. And it was a dreams, right? a song I wrote in an open tuning. I wrote it in um, open C, and uh, Evan loves doing that. Um, I love that because. Um, Jacob, I mean, Jacob doesn't know what chords he's playing. <laughs> I'm a feel guy. <laughs> when he's playing an open C, it's like, here's this chord. But for the, in order for the rest of the band to actually play that, you know, we got to kind of parse out, like, well, it's basically an F, but there's kind of some extra notes that he's ringing in there because of the open tuning. So you could play it like an F6 if you want to, you know, on the keyboard or something. But um, the the fun thing about that is is that Jacob can access some different kinds of riffs and ideas on the open tuning than you can get on a standard guitar. Yeah. Um, and I always play standard in this band, so that means that I get to kind of reinterpret his ideas written in an open tuning <coughs> on a standard tuned guitar. So like there's a part in this song, um, there's like a main riff melody that gets played several times. Yeah. Jacob introduces it, and then later in the song, I play it as more of a lead line. Um, but of course, I have to play it in a different, yeah. yeah, you know, I had to refret it all because it's in a different tuning. Um, so it sounds different. I play it a little bit differently, and that's a nice contrast than it would be if we were both playing it in open C or something. Yeah. And um, it's been just some different riffs and ideas that we've had that we <coughs> really liked this part of the song, but maybe we didn't like what we where we went with the song in the end, or maybe we just never felt like we were emotionally invested into the tone of the song enough and... So we've kind of pieced these things together, and, and uh, I think we were talking about how we had a song that we just had this very dramatic bridge to that just, it didn't make sense, and it, honestly, we didn't really know where to go with it once we had the idea, so we, we took that and put it in this song, and it really brought everything together. Uh, it reinvigorated the songwriting process for us, and we finished it, I mean, in like a matter of maybe a day or two. Yeah, it didn't yeah, take long after It did that. not after that, and so... We also trashed some other stuff in that song that wasn't ever working yeah. properly. We, we, used we to actually have this went kind of yeah. dual vocal thing in the last chorus where That's Jacob cool. and Angie would sing <laughs> one melody line and Fletcher and I sang a different line that was introduced in the bridge. And they were never really written properly to go together was the problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. <laughs> we were trying to force them into this thing without um really having the the right kind of cohesion. Um we took that out, kicked out uh, some lyric stuff that wasn't really um, working right, kicked out an extra bridge part that was just making it longer than it yeah. needed to be. And that's, for us, I think one of the biggest challenges is we can write a 15-minute song on accident <laughs> and <laughs> just going through and learning like what's necessary to a song and taking kind of what we say is like our simple song approach is how can I write a song that's simple and then add elements to it as opposed to, you know, everybody having their own songwriting influence at every part of every song because you kind of throw all your tricks into one thing and then it's it seems overwritten and, and it does to us too. And 
So we've really taken a different approach to that. And that was something we did here was we had the song that was, you know, technically had all these cool things in it, but, you know, we scaled it back and we took pieces out of it that we didn't feel were important to the song and tone. And, and then we came up with this great track and the lyrics really fell into place. Um, and so, yeah, we really like it. And it really is a, like a sampler platter of the cover letter. You get a little few elements here and there, but definitely not everything that we do. What I thought was interesting about the drum parts on The Wake is um, I'm so used to writing all my own drum parts and just develop, developing those on my own. But so Jacob plays drums and I'm in the rhythm section with Jared who can also play on drums and Evan plays drums too. So I have like three guys who can throw ideas and directions at me to play. And in The Wake, actually the chorus beat, uh, Jacob wrote that and they brought it to me and he's like, here's what I want to play. They showed me a demo of it they recorded like on a Sunday and uh, that's what I play. We tweaked it a little bit here and there, so it's like a mix of ideas I come up with and what like they tell me in a lot of ways. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But it's cool. I mean, it's, I've learned a lot of new things through that. You know, I, it's a good learning process. This is Young Blood by the Cover Letter. Let me tell you, Young Blood, what I learned long ago. There's no one in this world can tell you. And the things they will tell you as they walk on by You go in the wrong way, cut your hair, stand up bright As long as you smile when you lay your head down at night Oh, that's when you're doing it right
The cover letter is made up of Jacob Shipman, Jared Nall, Evan Runyon, Angie Venegas, Fletcher Enzer, and Patrick Barrow. We here at Jackrabbit Soundcheck want to thank the cover letter for bringing us a little closer into their world and carving out some space to bring it to all of you. You can find their sophomore EP, Cities Made of Sand, along with their newly released singles, including the song Dollhouse on Spotify, Apple Music, and Google Play Music. You can also find them online at thecoverlettermusic.com. Thank you for listening, and tune in for our next episode featuring punk band The Fleshlights on February 4th.